So let's begin our discussion uh, with amiloride diuretics. So let's talk about the basics of the amiloride diuretics. We'll talk about its uh, mechanism of action. So what is it basically doing? Well, it's gonna be blocking the renal epithelial sodium channels. Well, what does this tell us? Well, this sodium channel is called the ENAC channel, uh, and we're gonna be talking about the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. That's gonna be the primary location. So let's, let's take a look of what's going on with the amiloride diuretics. We've got our glomerulus, we've got our proximal convoluted tubule, or descending, loop, ascending, distal, convoluted, and collecting duct. That's kind of the basics. We're gonna be focused primarily on the distal and the collecting duct, and also the area in between. So what we're gonna be doing is the amiloride uh, diuretic blocks the sodium reabsorption. Reabsorption meaning uh, the sodium that's found in the lumen gets reabsorbed and goes back into the bloodstream. So we're gonna block that sodium reabsorption um, and it's not gonna affect the potassium. So no potassium affected. So potassium can still get uh, reabsorbed. So let's take a look even deeper now. We've got a cell, got another cell, got another cell. There's just a whole line of cells. So we're just taking a picture snapshot of one cell. We've got a lumen side, we've got an interstitial side. The lumen side, whatever is left in the lumen by the time it passes through the kidney, gets excreted into the urine. Whatever is in the interstitial side gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream. The bloodstream. So we have a luminal side and an interstitial side. We have a channel in here, and it'll be called the ENAC ENAC channel. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking sodium and it will reabsorb the sodium. And we've got a pump over here that we've already covered, the sodium potassium ATP ACE. So we're gonna cleave an ATP, and what this does is it's gonna reabsorb our sodium. We're gonna dump our potassium back into the cell, and it's gonna require ATP in the process. So we're creating a sodium gradient using this Na uh, K ATP ACE, so the sodium potassium ATP ACE. We're pumping the sodium out, which creates a vacuum. We're going to bring the sodium in through the ENAC channel. Now, I've already alluded to that we're going to block the renal epithelial sodium channel ENAC. So amiloride diuretics are going to block this channel. That's where the diuretics mechanism of action works. So we block that luminal channel. Uh, we've also got um, a potassium channel here. So potassium can leave. Um, and if we block this sodium channel, what will happen is you can get, uh, you, you lose sodium. You lose sodium. So you'll have possibly a hypokalemia. The amiloride diuretics are known as potassium sparing. They're known as potassium sparing diuretics. Uh, also of note that amiloride should not be used as monotherapy. They should be combined with other agents, possibly a potassium loss diuretic. Um, so a non-amiloride diuretic, so possibly like a thiazide diuretic. Um, okay, so these are gonna be your potassium sparing. Uh, also, you'll have spironolactone be an example of another potassium sparing, but we'll get to that. So you've got this potassium sparing diuretic. We're, we're not able to absorb our sodium. It gets lost in the urine. There's our hypokalemia. It's not gonna affect our potassium. Our potassium levels, we might actually get hyperkalemia. Emia, meaning found in the blood. So we're gonna have possibly excess 
potassium in the bloodstream because we're sparing all this potassium, we're not getting rid of it into the lumen. So we're gonna have a possible hyperkalemia as a side effect. Okay, so let's move on.